Another reminder that a minimum. Just a reminder that as long as you donate the uh, minimum amount or higher for any prizes, you don't have to specify that you want your donation to go towards a prize. It'll automatically be applied to the prize eligible at that particular time. And speaking of prizes, during this run, a minimum donation of $5 can make you eligible for a kid perler. Good luck, all donors. The bid war for DuckTales Remastered currently stands at original $265, remixed at $140. Keep up the good work, everybody. Later this morning, there will also be a donation war for character choice on Legend of Mystical Ninja. Dr. Yang currently sits at $50. Kid Ying is at $0. We want to thank the... Sweet. Change the I want to thank the um, donator of yeah. the Kid Perler, <laughs> Retro, Retro Gamer Ryan. Breaking everything right Thank now. you, right. Retro Gamer Ryan, That's for donating that gift. I kind of want to get rid of that taskbar, though. Let's do auto -wide. Here, let me uh, throw this over there. Press, can you press OK? I'm going to turn that off for now. Excellent. No, uh, not yet. I can't imagine it'll be too hard, though, just because I've played the game so much at this point. We have a $15 donation from Anonymous. Great job with the runs, Davidi, and everyone else for helping to beat the world record for the fastest cancer beaten. No. Yeah. $5 for Cerno being on the couch. It should be pretty loud, actually. For the run. Yeah, it should be really loud. Should be 20 pounds. I don't know. Shout out to Fox Nothing McPound. Out of I know you're watching, and good luck on your Star yeah, the Fox audio's on here. Like, I mean, is, is the audio device set correctly? I don't know. Volume turned up. Well, it says it's like making noise. Oh, no, go back into that, actually. Go back into that mixer. Uh -huh. 
Um, yeah, change this. Okay. You need to reset the speakers. Uh -oh. I might need to restart the game. I'm not sure. Um, but let me check and see. Like it should be playing music right now. Five dollars from anonymous. Might as well round out my donations to forty in total. I beat this game a long time ago, and by the time my bones healed, I forgot all the practice I had. Here's to the poor son of a bitch who gets the run. I'm assuming he's talking about this next game coming up. I want to be the guy. Turn the PC down. Can you hear something now? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh my god, all right. Okay. That's Turn loud for me. To it. Careful, it might be loud. Yeah, this game's really loud. Good. Is mic on right now, by the way? Your mic's on. It's on? Yeah. Oh. Sweet. Sweet. Get your pog champs ready, because I obviously look like that guy. <laughs> All right, let's do this. You guys have asked for this for a really long time. I'm ready whenever, I guess. I think they are ready. Oh, we need pay. Are you guys ready? What? The Skype call? Yeah, we need to get Kane on the Skype call. Yeah, the Skype call now. Yeah. Who is it? Do I want to know? Kayan? Kayan? Yeah. So just to let everybody know, we do have another Skype call. Kayan has called in. He's the developer of the game. He is the uh, developer of the game. So thank you very much, Kayan, for calling in. It's quite a pleasure to have you. I don't hear him. I don't know. No? Maddie. Maddie. Is he supposed to be on the Skype? <laughs> oh. Okay. So Kane will be on very shortly. Hello, gentlemen. Excellent. Off to a good start. What's up? Hello. What's up, everyone? Hello. Am I coming through okay? Oh, what's up, Kane? What's up, everyone? How you doing? Great. Doing good. Good start. Good started. Can, can we actually turn him up a little bit? Are we able to? So I wonder, can he us directly? That's okay. Sorry? Can he hear us directly? Or why? Yes, I can hear you guys. Um, oh, sweet. No idea. Excellent. We good? Yeah? All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Three, two, one, go. All right, this is I Want to Be the Guy. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's already set on your guys' screen. So first, learn to read, idiots. And second, I should probably explain this trick that's coming up right here. So this is something you're going to be seeing throughout the entire run. And it's the most basic time saver. It's just a quick save and reset. So you might be wondering why I actually bother to do that when I you know, have to bait this uh, platform back out again. But you'll notice as soon as I get up to the top right here, hold up, I'm able to jump up onto this other moving platform pretty much right away. Whereas if I hadn't taken that, I would have had to wait for this thing to go all the way to the right and then come all the way back over to the left and I just died. Dead! <laughs> Which is the basic dream of the game. Yeah, you might be seeing that kind of a lot here, actually. Especially, you know, trying to balance commentary with this whole thing. But we should be all right. I'm trying to do a fast strap there. Let's see if we can get it this time around, though. It seems a little bit choppy, like a tiny bit. Yeah. One more time. So basically what's going on here is though, um, all these platforms are constantly moving. They're like on a global timer. 
so even while I'm not on the same screen as them, they're, they're still doing their rotation, so whatever, I'm just going to take this. So basically resetting just takes them back to their default spawn points. And now we got Mike Tyson hype. We're not off to a great start here, but yeah, for like a proper introduction to the game, I know a lot of you are going to be unfamiliar with this. So maybe Kayan can do the honors since we have the actual developer here with us. Yeah, this is just the. This was actually the um, the first full game I ever made. It was really just a game I meant I made to sort of learn how to make games properly. In some ways, I succeeded. In some ways, I made a glitchy, horrible mess. But. Um, I don't know, this is like a, a game that I think like was ready to, a game like this was something that was ready to be made. We were starting to see lots of uh, various ROM hacks or things like Awada, the life-ending adventure and stuff like that. And all I want to be a guy was, was sort of like the first game of that type to be, um, to just be like a full game. And I think that's kind of where that notoriety came from, because we were already starting to see all these sort of like reference-driven um, games. But it was just like the right one at the right time, I guess. And it's just my attempt to, to troll the player and play with uh, player psychology. And oh my god, driver errors. What the hell? Kayan, this game's still trolling me. What the? What are you doing? Are you kidding me? What the hell? Kayan, this is your fault, man. <laughs> Yo, I'm blaming Windows. Windows is a bigger troll than I am, right? It's true. Dude, it took like four PCs to actually finally get something to run this game. Oh my god. Yeah, it's yeah. running on really old stuff right now. Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> oh, this Twitch lag is so bad. Man, alright. So, I feel like all those Windows issues are kind of integrated into this game, so it's pretty much appropriate that this happens right now. There we go. I mean, this game is very much known for crashing every now and then, and it has become a part of the game, I guess. Somewhat good news. I mean, I don't know if anything's coming of it, but I released the source code like a long while ago, and um, even though I haven't really... Um, I, I'm not even able to open it up anymore because I lost all that software and I haven't really bothered to try and get it again because it requires old versions of stuff. Um, there is actually somebody, if I recall correctly, who's trying to bug fix a lot of the game and just take care of some of the basic stuff. I hope, hopefully not like fixing any of the speedrun strategies or anything like that, but just like taking care of some of the basic stability issues and stuff. So we do have a $15 donation from Flagistan. Flag Can you ask Yaga to explain pixel aligns? Oh, <laughs> now is not the time for that. Well, pixel aligns are unnecessary in this game. No, it's not precise enough. Yeah. Oh, geez. So we're coming up to like kind of a notorious, I want to be the guy screen here. All right. Let's see. I can just make my way through this. I just want everybody to know who's gotten stuck on that screen that my 14-year-old non-gamer sister at the time got through that, so... <laughs> wow. Jesus. Kane, I thought we were on the same team here. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Alright, so coming up at the next save point here, we actually got something called a save jump. So, save points and I want to be the guy kind of carry a unique property in that they give you a double jump on reset, even if you use your double jump in order to actually hit the save point. So this will allow me to actually cross gaps that I normally shouldn't be able to. So I'm gonna double jump as far right as possible right here. Shoot the save, reset, and essentially, you know, triple jump, triple jump across. Unfortunately, you only get to see that once during this run, but you might see it as a backup later on. $10 for Made Dog. Hey, 10 shots, Made Dog here. Looking forward to you streaming more in 2014. Hope you I have a good so, run. Man. Thank you, thank you, Made Dog. Appreciate it. So, oh, what's no. Cerno doing on the couch? This isn't Jeez. a fan game. Man. $10 
ten dollars from Knights 473. Yo tens, Knights 473 here. Awesome to see you rocking AGDQ. Awesome, awesome cuz and glad to contribute. Thank you, Knights. All these people from my stream. That's not too kind. There I think they go. want the perler. Dude, I want that perler. My bag's just right over there if you can just throw that. But uh <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be reloading my save file right here, but I'm actually gonna have Yagamoth explain this part so I can kinda focus on the game for a little bit. Yes indeed. Um, what he's doing here is resetting back to the title screen by pressing F2. Or I guess the key bank for F2. Um, this uh, has the purpose of not crashing the game. Um, there are four specific spots in this game where after a reload, the game will straight up crash. And basically, those four spots are right after this boss fight, Mecha Burdo, after Mother Brain, um, the Wily, Koopa, whatever boss fight. Yeah. And, and those are the, the spots. Oh yeah, exactly, the cart ride, I forgot about that. I'm such a good programmer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, we simply assume it's going to be, it's something like a memory leak, because um, after those areas there is a new area loaded, and maybe something in the previous section uh, causes those crashes. So we simply remove those uh, information from the uh, memory by basically restarting the game uh, completely by going back to the title screen. Yeah, there's also random crashes you might run into while playing through this game, but for the most part, if you just uh, hold up a small skip right here, kind of a tricky jump. All right. Okay, there we go. Nice. But yeah, if you just run the game as administrator and in Windows 98 mode, that'll pretty much take care of all the random ones. And now we're actually coming up to the major, first major run killer of the game. It's the only RNG that's actually in this game, so you can kind of wreck me here. I should scoot up to the screen like that. Jesus, it's like a homing attack. I don't think I could have got out of that. Uh, Dracula was kind to me last time I played like a week ago. I beat Dracula on my first try, which really surprised me. Okay, I just gotta get these ectoplasms away from me. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, basically you just don't want him to do that homing attack. That's pretty much the one thing you don't want to see during runs. So right here, I'm going to time this shot on the save point with the kid landing on the ground. And that'll allow me to jump over this spike wall right here. So what normally happens is that that area above you closes off and you actually have to wait over on the right side of the screen and wait for that to retract back. But if you spawn the kid on the ground, then for whatever reason, that thing stays open. And you save yourself something like 12 seconds, I think. It's actually been a really long time since I've done any timing tests, so I can't say for sure, but... But yeah, I mean, I know I'm talking about all these, like, small time savers and I'm dying. Obviously, the biggest thing in I Wanna Be, in I Wanna Be The Guy runs is, you know, just staying alive. But hopefully this kind of just gives you guys an idea on what to expect out of, you know, actual glitchless world record ascents, for instance. And if you guys have any like questions for Kane or whatever, now would be like a good time. Don't really have much to say for a little while here. Or donation comments, either way. I mean, so can someone repeat that? Yeah, Kane. The question was: Were all the games that you included in here games you played as a kid, or did you include games uh, just that uh, you picked out at random? Pretty much all games I played as a kid. Well, not always. Some of them were games I played when I was older. Um, I find a lot of the um, old Nintendo games I like now are different from the games I liked when I was a kid. But um, but yeah, mostly it's all stuff that was drawn from my own taste. Dan, throw the information to the malicious Bruce. 
It just seemed twice. perfect to have this item that looked like an obvious collectible be something that just flat out killed you. And when I made the first screen with the apple that flew up, people hated them so much that I realized that they just had to be something that I kept including in the game. Because making this game was... <laughs> Making this game was very much a part of me just having a bunch of people play it as I was going along and judging their feedback and like using that to inform my, like what worked, what didn't work, and just trying to um, just make them angrier while keeping them from quitting. Like that was the goal. Yeah. If they quit, I did rope bad. If they just got mad at me, it, I was like perfect. If you're familiar with Metroid, very familiar uh, Kraid boss coming up right here. Kind of, maybe. <laughs> Backup strat right here, thanks to Shadow Link. Do you have any background or input on the Super Meat Boy tribute? Uh, no, I did not. And I um, would joke with Edmund. I was joking with Edmund when I was first playing the game that like it was way harder than I would have made it. I, I prefer to be funny rather than hard. I want to be just hard enough to be to make um, losses painful yet comical, while the Super Meat Boy levels are just brutal. So yeah, I feel like um, I want to be the guy who plays with your assumptions, as in usually a death means you fail, but a death in this game is generally not punishing at all, since you restart and you instantly are alive again. Yeah, I was originally supposed to make some developer levels for Super Meat Boy, but I ended up not doing it because the engine just did not... was not conducive to any sort of, like, subversion. Like, everything that could have been done with that engine, like, Edmund pretty much did. Like, he, he got every all the mileage already out of that, so, like... There was little I felt like I could do that would have been fitting to, like, oh, this is the I want to be the guy guys levels. Like, I could have just made, like decent other levels, but I figured that wouldn't really be particularly special, so... Yeah, this boss fight, first two phases are a little bit long and drawn out here, so... It'd be a good time to talk about the actual route, like... The paths pretty much branch out everywhere, you're able to tackle any boss pretty much in any order. There's like six initial ones that you have to beat in order to act, get access to the final area. So the route was pretty much just based around run killers. So I want to get rid of Dracula as early in the run as possible without backtracking. And since he's the only RNG boss, like I mentioned earlier, um, you want him to just like, I don't know, kill your run as soon as possible or just get him out of the way as soon as possible. And the second major run killer is actually coming up like in a couple screens here, but I'll talk about that more, you know, as we get closer to that section. I really hate the clown card boss. If there was one thing I was going to go back and like change a lot, it would probably be this boss. Just a lot of downtime and waiting. Yeah, so I just got a mash right here. It's really only like the third phase that, uh, that's really very interesting. Just need to try to get him down, get Dr. Wiley down in one bowling ball right here. So just need good shot placement and kid positioning. Oh, I should scoot up. Okay, how many times do you think you've beaten your own game? Okay, and how many times do you think you've beaten your own games? Um, if I'm if I'm including testing, uh, just like non-consecutive playthroughs, but like I've done every screen in this like hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, but like straight up through playthroughs, I've only done two. <laughs> I did one. I did nice. one for YouTube, and then I did one just again like 
like a week or so ago. But real quick, um, killing the Wily right there simply by, well, shooting really well and the force falling mode is actually really difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think you can afford to miss one shot right there, but. I was originally going to have like a whole like, like um, cave story hell like section that was going to have something to do with that, but um, I don't know. That just like fell through for whatever reason, and now they're just kind of there. I'll maybe do something with them in Gaiden if you have the files for it, and it detects that I might have like a little addition for that or something. Don't need to bother with any of these security drones right here either. Just wait for that shot. And take another reset right here, bring these platforms down to the bottom of the screen. Kind of want to speed this room up as much as possible. This takes forever. But it's also a good time to talk about the next run killer I mentioned earlier. So we're heading back into the room with uh, Ryu. And uh, we're trying to cross over towards the other side. So the, the easier way to do that section is to just... Uh, just approach it the same way as I did before, where you bait them out, turn, them, turn the fan on, and then, you know, have them break open the fan and then fly up. But rather than it taking us to, over to the Castlevania section, because it, the game knows we have already taken care of it, it launches us over to the other side. But alternatively, what you can do... Oh, jeez. SlowRunsLive.com. I am your representative. All right, but uh, rather than doing that, what you can do is uh, bait out Ryu and then time your jump perfectly and try to actually do a jump over him. So it only saves about, it saves about 10 seconds, so kind of necessary, but I don't know. It's something that's just never been consistent. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to line myself up along the edge, like pretty much directly on the very edge of it, and then hit right and jump at the exact same times. But what's gonna happen is uh, there's only like one block of space that you have, so if I hit jump sooner, then I'm gonna either bonk my head and fall down into the fan, or I'll do like a drop jump. I'll lose my double jump and just like walk off the edge. Tenshot actually thought this was a, a trick. <laughs> Dude, I yeah, I thought this was. Uh, I, I thought the intended way was to, uh, you know, do it the way I mentioned earlier, the easier route. But apparently, the intended way is to actually go for the jump over Ryu. I don't know what I was. Which thinking. is ridiculous, <laughs> because like I, I ran this game for like eight months and I got it down to maybe like fifty percent of the time, and it's like ten minutes into the run, so it caused a lot of heartaches. So we'll try that out a couple of times and see how it goes. Hopefully we can get it like first try or something. All right. So $5 from Paul Martino. I start a new job tomorrow, but this run is so hype I can't stop watching. Also, is it poor form to call in sick on my first day so I can just watch more runs? Of course not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a resounding no. All right, so I'm going uh, to go up here, turn off this fan, just bait out Ryu, and then we actually try to get up close here. All right, so we are lined up properly. That's fortunate. And first try. All right. Okay. Nice. So we're back to the first area of the screen now, and we're going to make our way over towards the room of divine transportation again. Next room over. And since we took care of Crave Geef earlier, we can actually just jump into his portrait, and that'll warp us back over towards the Mega Man area. So from here, rather than going off towards the right, we're going to make our way down on this screen. All right. 
Man, I swear I'm gonna step on that mic. Nash like crazy right here. Wait for this shot. Solid. All right. Yeah, it's really helpful if you can mash this well. Yeah, none of the bosses uh, really have invincibility frames, so. Definitely have kind of an edge if you can mash pretty decently. Okay, and I have a question for you. Why do you why did you leave so much time in this area? I don't know. It's we had a lot more really kind for you. <laughs> wow. So I think I just wanted the illusion of pressure because most of the vests were gonna come from people ruining the uh, the platforms and having no choice but to restart. I guess it helps out for any percent with warp cell. Yeah, that that's my favorite glitch ever. So, uh, Ken, I know that on normal and easier modes, like, you give the, the kid, like, a bow in his hair just to kind of make fun of you. Like, did you ever consider, like, making it so that you don't actually get the correct ending, like, gives you, like, a troll ending, just, you know, like how they do in the old games where the easier difficulties don't give you the actual ending, just to be a jerk? No, I want to poke a joke, but after that, like, I don't, I never really want to punish the player that much, and especially after they've spent so much time to try and get that far, like, you know, that would be too, like, all the punishment in this game is very mild, and that would be really severe. Um, and I thought about it, though, but then it, like, really quickly, I decided no. All right, I'm going to take a reset right here for the next screen, so this is actually one of my favorite tricks. Maybe because it's like relatively new, but get a platform on the other screen back on track the way I want it to, and let's see if we can get this. Ah, so close. Still good though, better than normal, I guess. Yeah, um, this is way harder than it looks because of how those wall jumps with those yellow black tiles work. Yeah, it's really tricky to do this. And just another long auto scroller right here, so feel free to you know continue to ask questions or read off donation comments. <laughs> so I just gotta say that the vines and the uh, the power wall jump walls were different, uh, totally on accident. <laughs> I just totally forgot a line of code for the vines, and I just didn't notice, and I designed that area around that. And that's why later on in later sections I combined both, but at the time it was just totally an oversight. So we have $18.15 from Exploder. Hey guys, thanks for doing such a great cause. I've been watching all your games done quick events for a couple years now. I recently got my first job and I'm glad I can finally give back to the speedrunning community that's entertained me for years now. As well as help cut out, uh, help out a great cause. Good luck on your runs, everybody. So, uh, Ken, uh, this game has a very deep, thought-provoking story. Was it based on real events? <laughs> <laughs> I had a very nice childhood. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we took care of the six bosses, so now we're able to actually access the final area. And best song in the game. Shout out to DuckTales. Speaking of DuckTales Remastered, there's a music type donation more going on. The original 8-bit version is at $280. The remix version is now at $140. Fortunately, I gotta cut it off right there. Gotta do another reload just to be safe. Don't wanna crash during the marathon here. Yeah, my vote's for 8-bit for Remastered. I'm just saying for anybody who's looking to donate. This is 
actually the only song in the game I even find enjoyable anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kayan, I hate you. I'm just kidding. Which song do you mourn the most? Sorry? Which, so which song are you the saddest about no longer being able to enjoy? Uh, definitely Mega Man, and I'm really sick of Guilty Gear. <laughs> <laughs> Just because every fan game uses that song. It's terrible. So I'm actually going to skip this safety save here because I want to save eight seconds to do that. <laughs> I'd rather not go back and take that one. If we die, I mean, I guess we can listen to DuckTales again. So, no harm done. Win-win. Win-win. So you maintain your momentum off the end of that cart ride, so if you double jump, you can just pretty much launch yourself directly into that boss fight. But I should shut up so I can not die here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the goal of this fight want to try and skip the second phase, so if he just transforms after doing his shot, then we're golden. Nice. All right. It might have looked like I actually missed some shot opportunities, but you actually can't shoot him too much at the start there. If you shoot him too much, he will immediately go further forward to the other side and you can not skip the second phase anymore since you don't have as much time to shoot him. Yeah, exactly. So I end up saving like 8 seconds that way as well. Just to remind everybody that there's a $5 minimum donation. Uh, for that minimum donation of $5, you are entered into a raffle for the Kid Perler. During this, I want to be the guy run. All right, I'm probably going to need to take over the mic from here like for the remainder of the run, just because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. A lot of small tricks here and there that I do need to explain. So coming up at the next save point, you're going to see something similar to that spike wall jump from earlier. So you're going to see me shoot at the save point and drop down and essentially suicide down in the flames below. And that shot did not hit the save point. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm dead. OK, here we go again. But yeah, I'm going to suicide in the flames below, but since these flames take like a second to actually spawn, I'm able to walk on the ground and uh, save myself a couple seconds and doing it the intended way. All right. Man, train wreck. Here we go. All right, there it is. And then gonna do a reset here just to get these boulders back on track. It ate my jump. And, uh, but I need to talk about uh, save point that's actually coming up in a couple of saves here. So first I need a shout out Angerval. He did a glitchless I wanna be the guy task. And found one major trick for me for the breakout section of this game, so. Let me actually try to get through this screen here first, but uh... Basically, if you've ever been through this, ever played through this game, you know how terrible that cherry can actually be over there. It kind of just moves any way it wants to, so... What I'm gonna try and do is, uh... Get it to bounce straight up and down pretty much the entire way. I'm so sorry about that cherry, by the way. <laughs> That was always something I wasn't very happy too. about, but I couldn't really get it. I didn't have the knowledge to make it behave better at the time. All right. 
So I just have to line the paddle up pretty precisely right here. This is probably the last major run killer. So I got to do that initial hit straight up and then I got to move slightly to the left here and then do two bounces up and down and then hope this works out. So it still is kind of random in that it like goes diagonally once in a while, but that, that's actually still really good. But I do need to call serious time right here because there's one more crash in the game that I do need to avoid that could actually corrupt my save file and end the marathon, which is very looking very likely now. Seeing my luck so far. Need this left wall line here. I think we should be good. No! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right. <laughs> Kappa. <laughs> But I do need to actually call serious time here because this is the end of the game. There's just one tricky spot in the guy's, uh, this final tower. All right, get ready on time, and Yagamoth, if you could call it. Thirty-five twenty-seven. <laughs> With an estimate, whatever, slowrunslive.com, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but I guess for, uh, to put this run into perspective, my PB, the current record right now is a 28.54, so it's like, yeah, I mean, you can lose a lot of time in a lot of places, so just really intense from start to finish. Thank you, Ken. Yagamoth, no problem. Yeah. Right around 35 is what I wanted, but man, some of those spots. But yeah, I do gotta, I do gotta shout out my other Twitch team, the Wannabes. I know a lot of you guys are watching, but if you guys don't know, this game right here actually ended up spawning like a whole lot of fan games, most pop popular probably being, you know, I want to be the Bashi, I'm sure you're all familiar with that. But there's actually something like 2,300 fan games out right now. Oh my god. So, I mean, uh, we're a group dedicated to playing a whole bunch of those 
crappy games. I don't know, like a lot of them are really bad, but there's actually quite a few decent ones. So if you ever want to check that out, definitely come check us out. And I guess I'll, I'm done here. I'll hand it off over to my man, Yagamoth. All right. All right. Well, good job, guys. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks for calling in, Kayan. Yeah, he's laying around for guide. Um. Uh, yeah, if you want to ask Kayan more yeah. questions. Kayan, you still on? Yeah. All right. I was wondering what influenced your music choices for all the different levels. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering what influenced your music choices for all of the different levels. Or some, you don't have to, you know, not all. Kane, could you hear that? Oh, no, I could not. Oh, okay, uh, the mic isn't working then. Uh, we're, there, the question was, what, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what influences uh, music choices? Oh, what influenced your music choices? Just my just what I grew up with, and I don't know, I really, really like uh, chiptune, so, you know, I'm somebody with, like, an NFF player, you know, sitting around at all times, just listening to old stuff, and just try to pick the best stuff that I could possibly think of. You, you must have had a really privileged childhood if you played Monty on the Run. <laughs> that was one of the few things that I did not play when I was younger, but I'm like, oh, this song is so good, it has to be in here. So it really is like just one of those like really great chip tune songs. So it's kind of brought up as part of the fan game. What's your thoughts on I want to be the Bashi? I think Bashi is one of the few fan games that's legitimately really good. I hate to really, you know, be down on the fan games, but most of them try too hard to be like really difficult to an absurdly silly degree. But Bashi is that nice mix of like it has its own voice design wise. And it's a very different voice from mine, so I don't know, I really appreciate it. Shout out to Solgren. Yeah, Solgren's awesome. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to see like more I Want to Be the Guy stuff in the future, though, I mean, definitely try to donate during this block. Gotta let Mike Uyama know you guys want to see it, so. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see like Calamando run I Want to be, be the Bosch in the future marathon. So, uh, who did the kid's voice? Also, someone guess has to run Battle Kid. The game's also amazing. Uh, okay, and who did the kid's voice? <laughs> just a random friend of mine, and that's totally unedited. That's just how he can talk. Um, I did the guy's voice. I had to like pitch shift myself lower and everything to make it sound right, but he just do that totally ridiculous squealy voice, and it makes me giggle every time I hear it. And as far as like the design of the kid, was there like any inspiration for it or did you just try to go as generic as humanly possible? Okay, so tr true story here. I was talking to my one friend about like pixel art and he was complaining like how hard it is to make anything. And I told him that I was like, oh, I'll make a little character for you to use in like just really fast. Okay, I'm this one. And then I made the kid. I'm like, oh, this is really cute. And then I started fool around with more um, game making stuff. So I decided like, oh, I'm just going to use that sprite I made. And that's just how that worked out. I didn't expect I wanted to be the guy to become a big thing, so I wasn't really thinking about it much at the time. I was just trying to learn how to make games, basically. Yeah. It's kind of ironic that you made it so that Frank used for his game, and now everyone and their mother uses it for theirs. <laughs> All right, are there any more questions for uh, Kayan? Um, I think Kay can stay in a Skype call because I think the donation goal was Gaiden met for I want to be the guy Gaiden, which he also developed. So. Sorry, I didn't. I, uh, <laughs> He's actually going to be staying in the Skype call. Oh, he is, okay. Yeah, because we still have one more game of his to play. Did you want to. Yeah, did you want to. So, Kane, you're staying in the uh, in the call. Yup. Please don't leave. <laughs> no, I gotta be here for guiding this game. <laughs> I, I think this is a very. I can't wait to make more of this to see it um, speedrun more because um, you know having a bionic commando arm just really opens up like routing options and stuff.
Don't start. We got about 30 seconds of commercials left, so don't start. He's still on. They're doing another run. Okay, one donation before we start the next uh, run. $10 from Anonymous. Cheers, everyone at AGDQ. Good luck in the runs. I Want to Be the Guy is one of the games that bested me painfully. Also, wave high, Professor Broman, in the crowd if that is you. He waved. Ten dollars uh, again donated anonymously. Does the donation announcer guy have a stream? I'd watch it just for the voice. Also, shout outs to Flo. He is the Bashi. I, I do not have a stream, but I've been told I will be on stream, uh, I guess, uh, during one of the runs. Is, uh, is he running? Hey, UA. Is he, he's running. got the donation. So the donation incentive for I Want to Be the Guy being run by Yagamouth as Gaiden has been met, and so Yagamouth will be playing the next run. <laughs> 